Okay, there's just a few more monetization strategies for you to consider. And one of those is in-app purchases. Now, in-app purchases can be either real or virtual. So you're probably already familiar with virtual in-app purchases. These are the gems, the money, the time, the energy, whatever it is. And it's really frequently used in uh, mobile apps that make your gaming experience slightly easier or faster, whatever it is. And the thing with in-app purchases is that uh, both Apple and Google take a 30% cut of whatever it is that you make, um, as long as it's a virtual good. So this is something to be aware of because if you're going to implement, because if you're going to implement uh, real world purchases like uh, hailing an Uber cab or selling t-shirts through an app, then you should think about using alternative methods for uh, in-app purchases because according to the TNCs of both app stores, you're allowed to bypass the app store for purchases only when you're selling something that is non-virtual. So this is something to think about. But of course, if you're selling something that doesn't cost you anything and it's just bits and bytes moving around, of course, then you have to implement payment through the app stores. The other term that you'll hear quite frequently mentioned is the freemium model. So this is basically where you download an app for free and you have certain features that are locked behind a paywall. Now, this can be either on a subscription basis, such as um, you know your, your services like Dropbox or Spotify, or it could just be a one-time upgrade to an existing app so that you get some extra features or that you get rid of the ads. Now, the freemium model is something that I would highly urge you to consider in this day and time. Um, it's hard to attract a user's attention for a uh, paying app currently, and it's much easier to give users, uh, I would say, 80% of the features for your app as a free app, and only for those who really use it heavily or really want the premium features, then charge those people X amount in order for them to get those other features that tends to work out a lot better than the apps which give you like 5% functionality for free and then the rest, you know, 95% is locked behind a paywall. That tends to generate bad reviews, bad ratings and reduces your number of downloads. But again, of course, this advice varies from app to app and it really depends on what it is that you're building. So have a look at some of the other apps within your own niche that you're building and see how they are monetizing. That's always a good guide. Now, finally, just three more that I wanted to mention. One is white labeling. And this is something that we do quite frequently at the London App Brewery. So to explain this, um, let me give you an example. Say you're a gym and you want to create an app for your members to be able to look at the class timetable, to be able to book certain classes, update their membership, etc. Now, your needs won't really be different from another gym's needs. So what you do as an app developer is you create something that doesn't have any one's branding or logo on it and then you approach a gym and you say hey would you like um, an app for your gym if they agree if you sign a deal then you reskin it with all of their logo their branding their custom text etc and this means that you can create one app and sell it again and again and again to the same niche and it can be a relatively lucrative way of monetizing an app the next is the partnership model, and this is something that's still relatively new and relatively unexplored. One of the first apps that utilized this was RunKeeper, and what they did was that they implemented um, these challenges whereby if you completed, say, 5,000 meters, you would get the reward in the form of a discount. So you could have maybe 20% off Nike shoes. And the nice thing about this is that all three parties involved, so the user, the app developer, and the advertiser all benefit from this model. Nobody really loses out. The user gets real life benefits from using the app. The app developer gets more in-app usage because people are spurred on by these incentives. And the advertiser gets exposure for something that's relatively cheap to uh, implement. So if you're building an app that has real world attachments, so say if it's something related to retail or something that's related to the food industry, then you can think about approaching, you know, brick and mortar shops or companies and asking if they would like to have a sponsorship deal where you get X amount upfront and then depending on exposure, you would 
uh, figure out some sort of deal between the two of you. This is something I really recommend people to think about because it's a relatively unexplored uh, strategy and I've seen it work quite well in a number of cases. The last one that nobody really wants to talk about, which I've mentioned already briefly, is selling your user data for money. Now, the problem with this is one of ethics, I guess, and conscience. If you look within the privacy policy of a lot of the health and fitness apps that you've got on your phone, hidden in there beneath layers and layers of legal jargon is the right to sell your health data. And the problem that I have with this is probably just a personal one. I don't really like the idea that my health and fitness data will be sold to life insurance companies or health insurance companies. I don't really want people to know that, you know, the last time that went for a run was probably 2009 or that I can eat 12 donuts in a sitting. These are private details. And I think that both of the app stores will in the coming years crack down on this practice. I mean, at the moment, it's still pretty gray, whether if it's legal or illegal. But I think this is not a reliable way of monetizing your app and we strongly recommend against it. So those are some of the most common ways of monetizing your app. And with every year, you see new strategies popping up. And it's something that you have to think really hard about because if you get your monetization strategy right, then it's much easier to succeed commercially than if you, you know, just go for the default paid app route because everybody is defaulting to that. So have a think about what it is that your app offers. Look at some of your competitors within your niche and see what it is that they're doing and think about which of these methods might fit your app best.